I've been coming into this quarry for near on 47 years. Peregrines are a recent addition to the site, when I say recent, around 1984 when we actually made a nesting scrape. And the following year a pair of peregrines nested in the scrape for the first year ever. It was quite interesting because uh, at that time, even though the property was owned by uh, Preston, and Water Dis Preston and District Water Board, then it was transferred to United Utilities later on, there was a gamekeeper, a resident gamekeeper. I knew uh, Jack quite well. Uh, obviously he's passed on now and uh, I decided to visit the, uh, the quarry in March, very late in the evening as it was going dark. As I came up, a Land Rover passed me. I had my back to the Land Rover. The Land Rover went onto the top of the uh, quarry and uh, Jack got out carrying a bag. He had a glove on and out of the bag he reached in and he pulled out a dead rabbit and he had a glove on it. I was so naive, I was only about 18 at the time. And he put the rabbit down above the peregrine site. Then it twigged. Poison. No other reason. He got back into the Land Rover and he went. And I thought, what should I do? I was in two minds whether to get someone to ring him up and saying that they'd found a rabbit above a peregrine nest that had not been poaching and to take it home and say they were feeding it to my children that night, but I didn't do it. Anyway, that's by the by. We took the rabbit away, never thought about it and disposed of it. Two years later, in the same quarry, we came up in the breeding season, there was about four dozen flags that had been staked into the quarry face. Again by the gamekeeper, with all the flags blowing in the wind to distract the peregrine from breeding. We told the landowner and eventually got them moved. But the peregrine didn't breed here again for a number of years. But in the last 20 years it's done very, very well. I've run quite a lot of chicks here. But this year there was quite an interesting development. About 9.30 on about the 24th of April this year, I got a call from a bird watcher that was coming up here looking for Harriers as it was going dark. And he said to me that uh, he'd seen a male riding a mountain bike coming up the quarry road and he left the bike on the side of the quarry and walked into the quarry, put a knapsack on his back, disturbed the peregrines. The peregrines were going demented above the quarry, scooping down on him. But the bird watcher didn't know what to do. And as he was looking at hen harriers, he carried on. He came back down at seven o'clock and the birds were still screaming in the, in, in the, in the air, coming down on this, uh, this gentleman who was just coming out of the quarry at seven o'clock. So the birds had been disturbed off the nest for at least two hours. The guy got on the bike and went away. Two days later, the nest was found deserted. So whoever had been in the quarry for doing what, certainly wasn't an egg collector because he didn't take the eggs, it certainly wasn't a bird watcher because he wouldn't have gone in and stayed for two hours. Our theory, which seems fairly reasonable, someone was doing something, either putting a camera on the nest or a, a device to protect it, and it's the only thing that we can think about, but we never found out who'd put the camera, if it was a camera, onto the nest. All we know is that the nest deserted. This was the only potential successful nest in Boland, peregrine nest this year and it was ruined because somebody didn't have the brains to stay away from the nest. You certainly don't keep a peregrine off for two hours, do you? Fifteen minutes is about the limit, especially when it's cold going evening. We were never contacted, we put the story on Raptor Politics, we were never contacted by any conservation group to ask us uh, for the identity of the man or could we interview the man that saw it, nothing like that. So we have to assume there was some complicity somewhere, but we never got to the bottom of it. But it's a shame really, because this nest could have been successful this year, had the person who'd been up here gone into the nest, hadn't done it. So that's the kind of thing that we're having to contend with. It's fairly obvious this guy had a license, but we still don't know who he was. We did trace his car to uh, a United Utilities uh, property that was rented out for the season. And he was obviously staying there. We found his mountain bike and his car. But that's just the kind of thing that, that goes on. People don't think. Um, and it's just one of those things now that's water under the bridge, it's gone. But we could have had one successful nest. I just thought that we should tell everybody. Um, 
and tell everybody the facts, really, because I know you want to know what's going on, and it shouldn't have happened. Again, Terry Pickford signing out. That'll be all for this year, probably. Thanks very much, everybody, for listening, and uh, let's hope we get some comments from you. Bye.